G'day sports fans, it's Phantom Air 100 here, your host for the new episode of the Casual Review Show. Of course, I didn't put up a video last week as I promised, I'm kind of sorry about that, I've had internet problems and was unable to do so. But here I am now with the next review. Today we're going to be reviewing a open world action themed zombie game called Dying Light. For those who are fans of zombie games, this game is going to be, it's going to be one of those ones that you're going to remember for a while. It's a very big game, and it's very similar to the Dead Island series. So people who love Dead Island, this is... It's pretty good. I haven't played a lot of Dead Island. I've never been a big zombie game person myself. But I decided to pick this up along with a friend, because it has a online cooperative mode as well, which is really cool. And it's... Yeah, it, it quite surprised me. I was quite impressed by it. I was not expecting to like it as much as I did. I've only played... A little bit of Left 4 Dead, a little bit of um, Dead Island, and I've played a few of the Resident Evil games, but it's never really been my thing. But this game is really fun, I really enjoy it. Good voice acting, and the, it's pretty as heck, the graphics are great. So let's begin our review. Welcome to Dying Light. So, Dying Light is a first person action game, survival horror. Um, you take the role of a undercover um, agent. His name is Carl Crane. He is working to, uh, he goes, he gets sent to this place. It's called, if I can just remember, it's a Turkish city called Haram. And there's an, a mysterious outbreak, which of course turns everybody into zombies. And the people that are quarantined in this city, so the city's been quarantined by the government. Um, and the people that are surviving here, uh, you get, you get dropped in by parachute. It's actually got a really epic opening. You get dropped in by parachute and you're here undercover to find out what's going on because there's a guy who claims he has information about a cure and is blackmailing um, your the company that you're employed by is blackmailing them um, with information and he thinks he knows about the cure so you get sent in undercover so you meet the survivors you go to this uh, big building called the tower where they all survive um, they don't know who you really are because of course you're undercover and pretty much you're working with them to uh, get um, information and that sort of thing and uh, companies send drops of vaccine down which help slow down the progression of people turning into zombies so you've got to go out into the world and find those that the survivors and do side quests and big missions and that sort of thing so I'm just going to leave this building this is a safe area I'm in at the moment I'm actually at at the moment I'm actually at a place where this main bad guy who is rivaling the survivors and is stealing the vaccine and harassing them I've actually, you actually have to meet him and then he's he's sending me on these lame jobs and if I do all these jobs for him he's supposed to then trust me um, but I won't go too much further into the story than that because um, I don't want to spoil anything so I'm just going to take you through the game and what I think about it show you the gameplay how it plays what you can do all that kind of stuff as you can tell the loading between areas isn't too bad the map is quite big all right so this is still a safe area so I could just run around here you know the survivors and stuff as you can see it's visually very nice it's a very nice looking game this game is first person and it's all based on parkour so it's all about navigating your way around um during the day the day at the moment i haven't patched this game for a while i know they've been updating it a lot uh, i haven't been online with it for quite a while now though um but at, at the last time i played it was about 60 minutes for daytime and then seven minutes of night time the night time is short because everything changes at night. During the day, your zombies are really slow moving and not quite so threatening unless they're in large numbers. But at night, seven minutes at night, they become more agile. They can chase you and you come across these other crazy guys called night crawlers. And they, they will continue to chase you until you get to a safe zone or a house. So, and they can kill you almost straight away. So it's actually quite scary when they chase you because at night it gets dark like it becomes truly night so you leave the safe zone i'm now in an area with zombies i'm in a combat area so down the bottom right you've got an icon showing the weapon you currently got equipped which pressing the right button the d-pad lets you cycle through them you have four equipped at one time like hammers and pipes and that kind of thing and as you see it's like yeah some of these are filled in whereas this one uh, the next one along is a bit more down because they take damage as you use them so they start to look a bit you know beat up and used and when they when they run out of durability you can repair them only a limited amount of times there's a little symbol with a hammer next to it and a zero 
There, that means I can't repair this weapon anymore. But some of them you can repair them a couple of times before they break permanently. And then the 27 next to it, underneath, little cog are the gears. So you spend gears to repair them. Uh, bottom left, there's a symbol there, which is my... Uh, it's like a UV light, which you can shine on enemies at night. Zombies don't like that at night. That freaks them out. Uh, you can also change it to, you know, like flashbang grenades and fireworks to distract zombies. All that kind of thing. Throwing stars. You, you can craft a lot of equipment too. If I go on the menu. Wrong menu. This one. This is your main menu. So your map. So this is a map of the area. So that's where I am. And so this is all... See, so look at this. Look how big this is. It's a very big game. It's huge. There is a lot to see and do, and you've got to be careful because when you're traveling during the day, once that's going to night, you can choose to go to a safe house and actually sleep, um, like 10 hours, until it's not uh, daytime again, or you can brave the night. You get a lot more experience and rewards playing at night, but of course, it's a lot more dangerous. Then you've got your quests, so your main story quests, and your side, side quests, there's lots to do. Your inventory in your inventory you've got so you've got a backpack so you can upgrade that as you go um so you carry all your extra weapons and that you've got four weapons equipped at one time you've got equipment so my flashlight flares firecrackers throwing stars and you've also got crafting so you can actually upgrade and change your weapons or you can dismantle them for materials when you and you also you collect blueprints when you find blueprints they teach you how to make new things so for example if i want to make the buzz killer i need uh, it's sledgehammer and two buzz saws, so I need a two-handed hammer to make this and then the components listed there You need metal parts and blades and nails which you'll find off of zombie bodies You can search them after you kill them or you can find them in chests and that kind of stuff You can find chests and unlock them kind of like you do in the Elder Scrolls game So it's kind of like Dead Island meets Elder Scrolls in the way it works. It's really cool and your skill trees so you've got Survivor, Agility, and Power. And you gain experience for these in easy ways. You don't just get experience for killing things. What happens is like for Agility. Agility is all based on your movement, your parkour. So every time you do something from jumping from one roof to another, or running, or jumping over a zombie, you get bits of experience for all of it you do. And then slowly it levels up, you get a point, and you can buy more things like health regen, dodging, the drop kick attack, that kind of stuff. And you've got your power, so that like, you know, increases things like, um, you know, learn how to use your weapons more efficiently so they don't lose durability as quickly, uh, give you, you know, different attack moves. And then your survivor gives you things like increase the size of your backpacks, so you can carry more stuff, uh, barter, so things are cheaper because you've got people who sell stuff to you. And um, you can get better at your crafting so you can craft more items because, of course, not only weapons, but you can craft other things as well like you've got all your craft parts but you can also make lock picks and med kits and stuff because you need med kits to heal yourself so i've got eight at the moment so the top right is your map showing where you are it doesn't show enemies of course but shows you your objectives uh the top of the screen on the left and right you can see my two levels of agility and combat and the top left all the way up is my health which is currently 125 you can slowly increase that through skills and then the eight which is my health pack that's the only way you can heal yourself. So, uh, the game is a bit different. This is the PS4 version. So, to jump, you press your shoulder button, the right shoulder button. Left shoulder button is to kick. So, it's a melee kick if you don't want to use your weapon up. Uh, and then you also can, uh, if you hold X, you've got like a sort of like a detective mode thing. It shines out. So, at night, you can see enemies through walls and stuff. It's like, you know, detecting them or hearing them, listening to them. Circle is crouch, uh, and uh, attack is your right trigger button, and of course the right trigger button is what activates your flashlight or whatever you've got equipped down the bottom left, like your you know your flashbang grenades or your, your fireworks to distract enemies. Uh, what is this I've got here? So if I throw that, there's nothing. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Wait, I think I think those are firecrackers. I don't think I have any. I have to craft them more. You've got your ninja throwing stars and stuff. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> down the zombie so it's you can it's open world so you can just run around and do what you want or you can you know do your side quests and stuff and get experience but you get experience just for running around so i haven't, i haven't played the combat for a little bit so i might be a little bit dodgy combat is very takes a long time to get used to it actually it's very it's very hard you have a stamina bar as well so you can't 
attack repeatedly for too long. Oh no, the zombies got me. So they can grab you and stuff, you have to press X to get away. I'm actually doing pretty bad. So I've got a skill where I can actually vault over zombies that get in my way. I've actually been hurt. So I'm just going to heal myself by pressing down on the D-pad. There we go. Let's try this again. Ah. It takes a long time to get used to the combat. It really does. But once you get the hang of it and you get back into the groove of things, getting around is really easy. I want to show you something. Drop kick. That's really fun to do. There also there are traps around as well, so you can activate traps. Um, of course, that didn't do anything since it's a light trap, but at night that would create this huge plume of UV light which stuns our enemy zombies and slows them down so you can get away. Just about everything you can see, you can climb on. Getting around is really fun. So you can get up on cars to keep away. There, there are, there's you know, stuff on fire, you can push zombies into the fire, and of course it'll burn them. The only thing is those, what I've done, don't search a zombie's body after it's been in the fire. Because obviously, uh, <laughs> you get burned, and that hurts. Yeah, so I do apologize, I'm not very good at this game, I never really was, and... Hey, Al Capone, you ready to do this? To do this? What exactly am I doing? Radio communication has been pretty spotty in the quarantine. These modulators will help boost the signal, so Rise can communicate with Atlas at the far reaches of town. Well, that's a benefit for everyone. So the best thing is, is Perhaps, that... but the Emperor must monitor his empire. So of course you get communicated to by radio, which is really cool. It also comes through the speakers on your DualShock 4 controller if you're playing on PS4, which is a, a nice little add-on. It makes it pretty cool. I like that. It's a pity they didn't have that feature in the Xbox game, but I'm sure that doesn't really matter that much, it's not that important. But it's kind of cool. So the world is huge, so I'm just running along here. So you can sprint, like, there's only a limited amount of time, but it doesn't tell you. But you can upgrade that, so you can sprint for further, and eventually you can sprint for unlimited amount of time. But you do have a stand up bar for your melee attacks, see? So when that runs out, screen gets a bit dark, and you get a bit, you know, worn out, and you can't attack very well, so you've got to wait until that fills up before you can sprint or run again. So it's got a very realistic tone to it. You can't just completely go commando crazy. Like I said, it's all about surviving, trying to stay alive. I love the crafting of it. It's really cool how you can create all these really nifty, handy items. And I don't like getting grabbed from behind all the time like that. I should be paying more attention. Overall though, the overall experience I've had so far with this game, it's pretty, the parkour is awesome once you get used to it like it is amazing ever since i figured out like ever since i learned the vault over zombie skill that is great there's another skill i can get eventually where when you do that it actually stuns them so if you've got a zombie like chasing you you could vault over him stun him and that makes for a quick escape hmm i'm gonna drop down here and see if there's anything in here there could be zombies hidden in here there could be like something to open and investigate doesn't look like there's anything in here to find so graphic wise, this game is pretty as heck. It looks great. It's made really well. It's very fluid. Um, it's supposed to be only 30 frames per second, but it's pretty smooth for that. Uh, this game actually didn't come out on the old gen consoles because they, they said that they couldn't get it to run on them. So I'm quite impressed by that. It gives you a bit of an idea of the, the scale of it and the work they went into. The fact that the older consoles won't manage it. So if you're a zombie game person, you love zombie games, you love anything open world, you like a challenge, you like something where it's like edgy teeth and you really have to pay attention, I highly recommend this game. If you don't like horror games, we don't like being scared, uh, I suggest either not picking this up or at least avoiding night time. Because night time is scary as heck. It really is. Once you get chased and you're running for your life, it is freaky as heck. So this zombie is a bit unique because he's in a fire suit. He's a lot tougher and harder to take down. If you can damage the barrel on his back, it will explode. Uh, just don't get yourself killed, obviously. And as you can see, zombie, some zombies like him can actually climb. He's also got like a poison gas around him, so I don't actually want to get in contact with him. So I'm going to run and heal myself again because I'm just so bad at staying alive. So obviously in real life, I would be dead by now. 
But thanks for watching the video. This is the latest review. Uh, so just on the final note, I'm not going to give a score because that's not what I do. But if I had to, I would score it really high. It's one of the biggest and most fun games I've played in a long time. It's a great experience. Uh, the story is really interesting. I'm not going to tell you any more about the story, but it's got. It's very interesting the way you go because the agency that hires you starts telling you to do pretty shitty things and despite the fact you work for them you start to bond with the other people you meet um, and all the characters and voice acting is amazing there's a lot of actually really good names in there that I've seen from um, anime and other movies they've actually got some pretty good actors on there um, it doesn't list them all if you look it up online but you'll recognize some for sure if you're into anime or movies like that because the, the main voice actor I don't know his name but he sounds very familiar to me but this game, the parkour is really good because that could have, that literally could have been a success or not. But it works. It's the only thing I will have to say negative about it. It took me a while to getting used to having the jump button on the top trigger. I was expecting that to, you know, be on the X button because that's what you were used to in a game. But it's not. So it, it takes a while to get used to that. But once you do, once you get into it, you get into the combat, you start taking out zombies really easily, being really clever, uh, listening carefully, because you've got to take a lot of audio cues from this, you know, because nothing comes up on your map. I love the x-ray vision too, it's like a Mortal Kombat style thing. It doesn't pop up very often, but it's very, very cool. You loot your zombies for your metal parts and stuff. Oh, he's still alive. <laughs> you just stay dead. So you can search stuff, you need to search everything you find because it's all about surviving. So you need to search everything. Oh, lockpick. Love it. So it's all about surviving, all about running around. Parkour is really awesome. Pretty much everything you see you can climb. It's lots of fun. Dying light is in my opinion an absolute masterpiece it's a new IP so I look forward to it being a big competitor with um, Dead Island and games like that I really look forward to it because I think that you know it was pretty successful and I loved it so I really hope they do more and there's a sequel and even more because this could be a strong contender as one of the best zombie games I've ever seen and played in a long time just for its crafting system the amount of weapons there are the DLC they bring out for it the day and night mode it has an online co-op mode so you can hook up with a mate and you know help each other survive and do the side story missions or the actual main story uh, together or you can literally just act like you would if this was a real life situation just run around and survive so that's the cool thing about it having the multiplayer as well gives it a lot more depth because if you didn't have that it would only it would only feel like half a game the fact that you can hook up with a mate and play is the best it doesn't have local split screen like the left for dead games does so i mean that would have been cool so that is a little bit disappointing but aside from that yeah this game is amazing it's lots of fun so if you're into this kind of thing you want a challenge you want something that's a bit different with the crafting the huge map open world interesting story and you just love bashing zombies in the most gory way possible once you get into the deeper skills and the combat, it's really exciting. I recommend picking this game up. Definitely. Lots of fun. Dead Island. If you haven't if you haven't played a zombie game before, this is a great place to start because it's just, you know, you can do what you want. You've got a lot of freedom. And if you're somebody who loves horror games, loves horror movies, and you've played a lot of them, then give this a shot. If you haven't already, you know, do yourself a favor. Pick it up, man. It is great. So this has been Phantom 100 for another casual review. I will casually say, buy this game. It is fun. So that's me signing off for now. I need to recharge my batteries once again, because I'm getting low on fuel. So until next time, guys, keep gaming, have fun, and I will just quickly just, you know, do a bit of combat for you before I sign off. So enjoy, and I'll see you next time.
Come <laughs> on. 